Now we need to take a look at our variable jump height code from before. The way we did it before will no longer work because of the timer that we're using. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to track when we've jumped. And then if we've jumped, check whether the commission, uh, whether the, <laughs> we're going to check whether the conditions for the variable jump height has been met. So we're going to check, have we let go of the space bar since we've jumped? And if so, apply this multiplier to stop our or to decrease our, our upwards velocity. So here's how we did it before. We just said, if we let go of the space bar, set the velocity equal to what it was, except decrease the y by some amount or apply some multiplier to it. So what we're going to do instead now is with another Boolean, which we're just going to say, or which we're just going to call private bool check jump multiplier like that, which we're going to set true in our jump functions. So check jump multiplier equals true. So just copy this and paste it in here. And so when this is true, check if the character or if the player has let, uh, let go of the space bar. And if so, apply the multiplier. And where is my check input function? Here we go. Okay, so if input.getButton up is jump, um, we're just going to change this from get button up to get button so that when we're pushing the space bar, this is going to return true. And if we're not pushing the space bar, it's going to return false. And we're going to say if we need to check for the jump multiplier and we are not pushing the space bar, apply this multiplier and also set check jump multiplier multiplier equal to false because we only want to do this once like we did before. And now the code, it'll work exactly the same as it did before and it'll do exactly the same thing. And so if we save this now and head back into our game, everything should be working quite well. And so if we jump and push the space bar super close to the ground, but before we're actually grounded, the character will still jump, but it's not too noticeable. And now, if we look at our wall jump, it's very, very difficult to actually get the wall jump to work. And that's because before how it worked was the character was always wall sliding. And so when you pushed the, um, when you gave movement input to move away from the wall, the character wouldn't be able to rotate. So all the conditions for the wall jump were still being met. But now we need to actually push into the wall to wall slide. And that makes it, uh, not work essentially. So what we're going to do now is when the character is falling down against a wall, but he's not wall sliding. So when he's like this and we push the movement key away from the wall, we're going to freeze the character's X movement and rotation for a very short amount of time to give the, the player time to input the rest of the keys required for the, the wall jump. And then if those keys, if those inputs are given, we will wall jump. And if it's not, the character will just move like he normally does. And it's such a small time that it's barely noticeable, but it makes the input a lot easier again. So let's head back to the code. And we're going to start off by declaring two more booleans. And it's going to be called can move and private bool can flip. And so basically we're just going to make it so the character can't move when can move is false and the character can't flip when can flip is false. So let's go to our apply movement function. And then let's just change this to else if can move. And let's go to our flip function and just in this if statement add another condition which is can flip. Now let's go check if the character is trying to move away from a wall. So we'll start off by going to check input once again, over here. So we're going to say if input dot get button down, and we want this to be one of the horizontal input keys. So horizontal. 
and we are touching a wall, then if is grounded is false, like that, and our movement input direction does not equal facing direction, then we are going to set can move equal to false, and we're also going to set can flip equal to false, like that. And now we also actually need the, the timer that's going to keep track of how long to keep this uh, false for. So we'll say, um, we'll just call it turn timer. So set turn timer equal to turn timer set. And we'll just come up and declare those real quick. So we'll say private float turn timer and public float turn timer set and we'll just set it to 0 0.1 by default and now we just need to keep track of this timer and then when the timer runs out set those things back to true so we can just say if can move is false we can decrease turn timer so minus equals time dot delta time and then if turn timer is less than or equal to zero set can move back to, to true and can flip equals true like that uh, something I forgot to add in our check if wall sliding function is in here we need to say if our rigid body dot velocity dot y is less than zero because we only want to wall slide if the character is moving down and not if he's jumping up against a wall. So now if we run the game you can see we have a character that can still move and jump and jump up walls. Now a little issue there that I see now that we quickly need to fix is in our wall jump function we need to say turn timer equals zero can move equals true and can flip equals true and so that'll stop the character from sticking to the wall when we actually do perform the wall jump so let's run this you can see the character can still wall jump just like that. Hi, it's Heinrich from the future. So you may have noticed that the wall jump was not working as well as I had intended for it to work there, and that is just because I am a big dumb and I forgot to change my rigid body collision mode from discrete to continuous. So if you want yours to work better, just do that. And now just to change something with the movement a bit, um, I feel like the gravity is a bit too low, so I'm gonna come over here and change the gravity scale to eight. And I'm actually going to just change my movement speed to 9, uh, my jump force to 20. And I changed my wall check distance to 0 0.65 from 0 0.4. Um, I'm going to change my wall slide speed to 1. Um, this movement force in air doesn't matter anymore. Air drag multiplier, I'm going to leave the same. Leave that the same. Wall hop force doesn't matter anymore and change our wall jump force to 30. And we also need to come over here and change our collision detection from discrete to continuous. So if we run this now, see we can jump. And in my opinion, this, this wall jump just feels a bit better and it's a bit more responsive. Um, we had some issues there with the uh, in jump not working as often as it should have. And I'm pretty sure that was because of the rigid body collision detection not being set to continuous. Um, so that should work now. Okay, now the final issue we need to solve is the character's ability to jump up just one wall. So if I get up here, I can technically climb up, climb up this wall by just jumping and moving back towards it really quickly, like that. And that's going to remove the whole point of being able to jump up walls like this. So 
this is all just because of the way the character moves. The fact that the character is able to like turn in air so quickly and move back in the direction it came from. Um, so all that we're going to do is we're going to keep track of the character's uh, wall jumps. We're going to keep track from which direction he has wall jumped. And then if within a certain time from leaving the wall, the character decides to turn around, we're just going to cut his Y velocity and send him back down where he came from. So let's jump back into our code. And we're just going to declare a couple of variables real quick. So we'll come up here and we'll declare a wall jump timer. So private float wall jump timer like that. And we'll create a set variable for it. So public float wall jump timer set, just like that. And we're just gonna by default set it to 0 0.5, half a second. And now we need to create a Boolean. called has wall jumped. And lastly, we're going to create an int that's going to keep track of the last direction that we wall jumped. So we're just going to call it last wall jump direction like that. Okay, and now let's start off by going to our wall jump function. And we're just going to come in here and we're going to set has wall jumped equal to true. And we're going to set wall jump timer equal to wall jump timer set. And then we're also going to set last wall jump direction equal to negative, uh, not cube face map, negative facing direction like that. Because if the wall's on the right, the character's facing right. So the wall jump direction is left, which is negative one. Yeah, you get it. Okay, so now we need to come to our check jump function up here. We're going to say if has wall jumped and our movement input direction equals negative last wall jump direction, then we are simply going to set the y velocity of the character to zero. So rigid body dot velocity equals a new vector to rigid body dot velocity dot x and zero. And then we're also going to set has wall jumped equal to false. And then we need to say else if wall jump timer is less than or equal to zero, we're going to set has wall jumped equal to false or else we just need to decrease the timer. So wall jump timer minus equals time dot delta time. And so now if we save this and head back to the game and run it, you'll see that when we try and jump up a wall like that, it just sends us back down. Now it can still be possible to, to jump up one wall and if you find that your character is doing that you can instead of setting it to zero set it to a slightly negative velocity so it'll not be gravity taking care of it. So if you have like a lower gravity or something. Um, but yeah so that's uh, our improved character movement. You should play around with your jump forces and uh, different constraints and get movement that works for you. I hope you found this uh, video helpful and I'll see you guys next time.